This is Mortgage Lending Mastery. Get the knowledge you need from America's Mortgage Mentor. With more than 35 years of experience and over $1 billion in lifetime fundings, you'll learn to advance your mortgage practice quickly and efficiently. Also, be sure to check out Jen's book, Launch, How to Take Your Business to New Heights. Available on Amazon. For a signed copy, contact Jen at jenduplessis.com. Now, here is Certified Mortgage Planner and CEO of Kinetic Spark Consulting, Jen Duplessis. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to Stop Talking, Take Action, Get Results. I'm your host, Jen Duplessis, and today I have a special guest with me because it's not very often that I bring back a guest twice on the podcast. In fact, I think I've really, this might be the third time that I've done that. Um, but Stacy Brown Randall just has so much great content um, to provide to all of us as you know, listeners, as entrepreneurs and salespeople, that I felt like this would be a great time to ha- um, bring her back in. And um, so that said, welcome, Stacy. Glad to have you again. Well, I'm honored to be back. Thank you very yes, much. Very much. much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know what I really like about this particularly, and I may want to bring more people back, you know, in the, in the future is that, you know, it develops our relationship. We continue to develop our relationship. And as we were talking before we got live on air here is, you know, things that we can do to help each other's businesses grow. Right. And that's what it's really all about referrals. And so today that's what we are going to spend our time talking about. But before we do, for those of you that have not heard of Stacy, I want to just um, tell you about her really quickly and also let you know that we'll have a link to um, the first podcast interview that we had with her um, here in the bottom here. And that was back, we just found out it was back in February of 2017. So it's almost been three years since we've talked. So her life has changed. Her business has changed. Mine has changed. My business has changed. Obviously I'm retired now from a 35 year career in lending and I'm full-time speaker, coach, and podcaster. So lots of things changing, right? So let me tell you about, um, Stacy Brown Randall. Um, she's a member of the business Failure Club, and I love that you said that. <laughs> I love that you say that. A contrarian on how to generate referrals and supporter of the entrepreneurial dream. Um, she is a three-time entrepreneur, award um, award-winning author of Generating Business Referrals Without Asking. And I know that when you hear that title, all of you are saying, "Okay, so gimme, gimme, gimme. How do we do this?" And she's also the host of Roadmap to Grow Your Business podcast and national speaker. Um, Her program helps small business owners and entrepreneurs and salespeople take control of their referrals, their client experiences, and their and their business. And I absolutely love that, Stacy, because one of the key things for my coaching program is the client experience, how we communicate with our clients. Um, It's no longer customer service. It's how they feel about having worked with you. So let's just dive right in and talk about um, your definition of referrals. Like what is truly a referral? That's such a good place to start because I feel like people take different terms and they kind of use them interchangeably when they're talking about different types of prospects that maybe they have coming into their business. And so you'll have someone talking to me and they'll be like, oh, I got a referral. And then they'll tell me what happened. I'm like, yeah, that was actually an introduction. It wasn't a referral. And they'll be like, wait, there's a difference? I'm like, yes, there's very much a difference. So I think it's great for us to kind of just level set in terms of like, hey, this is what a referral is. This is actually what we need to know and how it's different from a warm lead or an introduction or word of mouth buzz, because those are actually four different types of prospects and four different sales terms. Let's do that. All right. Let's talk about the first one. Yeah. So referrals are going to have two things that the other sales terms are not going to have. They're going to have none or only one of these two. But what a referral has that a word of mouth buzz introduction or warm lead is going to miss or not have is first a personal connection. There is always somebody willing to put their reputation on the line and recommend you to someone that they know that has a problem and they want to help them solve their problem or overcome their issue or whatever the issue is. Right. So there's always that personal connection. You're always going to be connected with them. So a lot of times people will say to me, oh, um, I got a referral recently. And I'll be like, awesome. Tell me about it. And they'll be like, well, you know, I had a client that told me they were talking about me to somebody else who needs to hire me and they're going to have them follow up. And I was like, oh, that's not a referral. 
Yeah. So close, right? So yeah. close to a referral, right? Mm -hmm. But there was no personal connection. Right. So you're actually not in the driver's seat to be able to do any type of follow-up. And so we don't know who the person is, right? We're just out there. Someone thinks well of us and gosh, everyone's so busy. You know, they're probably going to forget to get back to you. So right. it's so close, but yet it's not because it's lacking a personal connection. And so there's, and typically personal connection in this day and age is going to happen over email. It can certainly happen over a text thread when you're all joined together on a text. It can happen live, like when you're at the same networking event or the same charity dinner, it can happen then too. But nine times out of 10, it's going to come over email where the referral source is going to send an email to the prospect and copy you on it and make that connection between the two of you. So that's the personal connection piece. The second right. thing a referral May I interject? Yeah. So, so also instant messaging, because yesterday I got a referral from someone. And so it becomes, you know, two people in an in instant message. Yes. Says, hey, I want you to meet Jen. Jen, I want you to meet David. David's great. Jen's great. Good luck, you two. Right. <laughs> right. So it's interesting. Like if that were the language that came through and that you were well, saying, say exactly that exactly that because that's actually introduction language like the hey you guys should be yay yeah, me, no, me, no, right? no, it was more than that yeah yeah so totally um but yeah so and so i should add that to my list of things that i talk about it can definitely happen in instant message i mean it's happened to me over facebook messenger before right so it definitely yeah. happens but usually it's going to happen more likely through email though not always right um and then the second thing a referral always has is that it's always going to have a need identified mm -hmm. so we knew like when we're when we're in that word of mouth buzz situation you have a client who's talking about you to somebody else who needs you. So there's a need identified, but there's no connection for you to get to that prospect because you haven't been personally connected, right? This is like looking at it from that perspective of an introduction. So a lot of people are like, Oh, I got this great referral. And I'm like, mm, it's just an introduction because it was exactly what you said. It was like, Hey, Jen, you should know Sam and Sam, you should know Jen. You guys are great people who should know each other. Great. You've been connected. But, but then you stand there and you're like, I don't understand. And I'll right. tell you, that's happened to me before, uh, not as a receiver, but I've watched it. Um, there was a person in my B&I group several years ago um, that was a great connector. That's what they did, connections. And they would, you know, at a networking event, they would walk the two of them and go, Jen, I want you to meet. And da, 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 I want you to meet. And there, go, right? And I mean, that was her style. It's like, go. And, and I saw people who are not good at networking and not good at, uh, uh, what do you call it? Conversation. Connecting the dots. Connecting the dots. They're standing there going, oh, so, um, so hi, what do you do, right? Whereas going through that and saying, hey, I wanted to connect the two of you and here's why I wanted to connect you. She was just mentioning that she is looking for, you know, people who like underwater basket weaving with puppy dogs. And I know that you know people who love underwater basket weaving with puppy dogs. And this is a good connection for the two of you to move forward. Right. So there's always that why, mm -hmm. right? The why are we being connected is actually being addressed. And so a lot of times people will think it's a referral when it's truly just an introduction. And the reason why people are like, okay, great. So personal connection need identified. That's the definition of referral. Why do I need to know how it's different from an introduction, word of mouth, buzz, or warm lead? And I always say, because I need you to know how to respond, right? I mean, nine times out of 10, the way you respond to an introduction should be different than how you respond to an actual referral, which is also yeah. different than how you respond to word of mouth buzz, which is actually different how you respond to a warm lead, like your reaction and the conversation you're going to have or how you're going to respond is entirely different. And most people don't pay attention to that. And that's why I want you to know that when you have a referral, you have to have two things, personal connection and a need identified. When you have an introduction, you've been connected, but there's been no need identified. And when I say need identified, what I'm talking about is the buyer knows they have a problem and they're in buyer mode right? They realize in the situation, they're the prospect and they're right. the one, they're not looking to sell anything. They're looking like, Hey, yeah, that's right. I got this problem and I need Jen to help me solve it. And so Stacy's going to connect us, right? So they, when they're in buyer's mode, that's what makes a referral quicker to close, right. easier to close, less price sensitive, right? All those things that we look for in a referral. It's why we want referrals. Well, it's got to have, the, it's got to be a referral to have those amazing qualities of being easier, quicker, faster to close. And so you've got to have those things. So when you get an introduction, you know it's an introduction because there's, you've just been connected, but you don't know why. And in that situation, you don't know who the prospect is. Right? Right. You don't know, am I, are they trying to sell to me? Am I trying to sell to them? Or are we truly just being connected because we need to grow our network and have one more person that we know, which that's okay, 
but we need to know that because it impacts how we respond. Mm -hmm. And so when you get word of mouth buzz, I want you to know that was word of mouth buzz. That wasn't a referral because I wasn't connected, but I do know there's somebody out there that needs me. And when you get a warm lead, that's typically somebody saying, you know, Hey, I know this company needs you, Dan, you should definitely call them. Here's the contact name and number you should call them. Well, that's awesome, but we don't know if they actually know that they have a problem and we have no idea if they really want to hear from us. And because you're not willing to connect us over email, that trust you have in me to solve their problem isn't transferred to them. So they don't know that. So it's just a warm lead lacks personal connection and a need identified word of mouth buzz lacks the uh, personal connection and introduction lacks the need. So none of those have both pieces. Only a referral has both pieces. And the only sales term I'm kind of leaving out in this situation is cold lead, but that's because most of us all know what a cold lead is. And of course they wouldn't have anything that a referral or any of the other ones have. So it's really yeah. like people confusing introductions, word of mouth, buzz, warm leads with referrals. They are actually four distinct different types of prospects. Yep. I love that. And I'm taking copious notes and I hope everybody else is too, you know, but I'm, I'm making sure that, you know, I understand, uh, you know, that one is lacking personal, one is lacking need, one is lacking both, and one is giving both. And that's, you know, just kind of bringing that all full circle. Um, all right. So let's just focus in on the referral itself, but, but, it itself. So what is the, the best reaction or engagement you feel would be good for a referral to have the highest conversion ratio? So that's such a good question to ask in terms of like, what do we do, right? When we've been receiving that referred prospect, because what we have to recognize is that referred prospect shows up in a way that no other prospect ever will. Not the prospect you met at a networking event, not the prospect who happened to answer your cold call, not the prospect who happened to answer your direct mail piece. It's that they're showing up and they already have trust in you. So you need to leave your dog and pony sales pitch, so to speak, behind. They don't need that. Right. That's don't not unsell. what they're interested in. <laughs> yeah. Right. You don't need to sell is what I always tell folks. You do not need to sell. Um, right. but you do need to make sure that when you're having that conversation, that you're understanding what their issues are and what their pain points are and how you can help them solve them. But remembering that they already trust you and they they can't quite put their finger on why because they're not gonna say, I trust you because Jen referred me to you and Jen trusts you. But that's what's happening. Right. So it's really important to recognize that a referred prospect shows up entirely different. There's an entirely different script that you should be using when you're talking to a referred prospect. You should not go into sales mentality. You should go more into like curiosity mentality of like, okay, understanding like, why are we here? And then can I help you? And maybe I can't. And then I need to be able to direct you on because a referred prospect is also one that I think you should treat, I think you should treat all your prospects awesome, but a referred prospect, right? There are ramifications <laughs> to how you treat this prospect based on how the, it, what gets back to the referral source, if it does. So it's just really important that you have the right mentality and then the right conversation kind of structured in place. And it doesn't include the, okay, let me pitch you and show you the 32 features and everything we've got. And here's all the benefits. Like they don't need that. Yeah. Right, it's just so to throw up. Yeah. yeah, the show up and throw. Okay, so I have a question around this because one of the um, strategies that I've always used in this referral um, aspect is the first thing that I do in my process is I contact my referral source. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, the first thing they do when they get a referral is they contact the referred person. <laughs> I'm sure there's a refer e and a refer or. Um, <laughs> Right. Um, so the re so they contact the refer or right and say, you know, hey, uh, you know, so and so said to give you a call. I just want to, you know, and now we get into the curiosity part of it. I actually call the refer e. I probably have that backwards. I don't know. But well, the referral source. Right. Yeah. So I, I contact my referral source and say, I just want to say thank you so much for referring this person. But before I call them, is there anything I need to do to help you? in the relationship that you have with this person because i think one of the things that we fail to do and i can say, speak from the lending perspective of this is that um when a lender gets a referral from a real estate agent there's a variety of these what by the way there's word of mouth hey by the way i was talking to a client and they're probably going to call you you know all the way up to referral the trusted handoff right but i always call because we assume that they have this client 
in the bag. And then that may not always be the case. Right. Um, and uh, so I always call them and say, you know, tell me about the clients before I make the phone call so that I can be a little more prepared. Um, you know, do you need any help? Do I need to talk about you a little more? Is there something I need to know about? Is that she's the decision maker? He's not. She's a linear thinker. He's a rocking chair thinker. You know, what are some things that I could use to help me in communication with them? What are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think it's important to understand how your referrals show up. So a lot of people are going to receive, hey, I'm referring you to my neighbor, to my friend, to a colleague, to a peer, right? Or maybe to a client of mine. And so depending on the type of referrals that you typically receive and who your referral sources are, um, you may not need to do that. In your case, though, because you know your industry with the mortgage world, you know that so perfectly well, that is a perfect thing to follow up with. Um, in some cases, I've been referred to someone and I'm like, I think this is a referral. I'm not really quite sure. So I will sometimes follow up and be like, okay, what am I missing? <laughs> right? Like, what, what am I missing? What do I need to know here? Um, but if you already know that, right? If you know for your industry, when a realtor is referring someone to you that they may not be a hundred percent like their client, then yes, I think that is a brilliant strategy and everyone should adopt it immediately. A lot of times though, when I'm dealing with um, other people who are like going through my growth by referrals program and they're receiving referrals, it's typically a friend, a neighbor, a peer, a colleague, or a client mm -hmm. that they're referring. And so there isn't that, they're not quite right, that client relationship that you have to so much worry about. But yeah. the immediacy thing that I always tell people to do is when you receive that email, right, I know what you're going to want to do is to, like most people, follow up the prospect, right, right away. The person who's been referred to you, like, let me follow up the prospect. But I always say hit reply all on the email. Mm -hmm. And then in that moment, what you want to do is thank the referral source for referring you and connecting you to the prospect and then address the prospect and say, I'm so glad that we were connected. Right. And then you kind of continue and however you handle setting up your first call or first meeting or whatever your process is. And then right. you kind of put in that language, but then, right, that's for the immediacy factor and it's for to keep the thread going. So the prospect, when they respond back, they remember that's right. I was connected to Jen because of Stacy. Right. Right. We're all still on that email thread. Right. Um, but then I want you to take five seconds. Okay. It may be like 55 seconds, maybe a minute and 55 seconds and pull out a thank you card and write a handwritten thank you card to yeah. the referral source for sending you that referral and naming that referred prospect in that card. That's super, super important. And a lot of people don't do that. Um, and because that's going to have a greater long-term impact on the memory of runway of what your referral source remembers about you and how they feel about you is by that one small act can impact what they think and feel about you. And they're not even quite sure why, but they, if yeah. they really were to trace it back and be back to that moment where you really impacted how they felt about you. So yeah, there's definitely some follow-up procedures I always teach people to follow, but that handwritten thank you note is one that cannot be overlooked yeah. and the email response back isn't going to solve it. Right, right. So for those of you that are listening and not watching, I have a thank you note from someone that I just had a conversation with. You know, thank you for taking the time. I'm, I'm putting together a new coaching program and I'm doing some research. And I said, you know, I, I need some help with research. And this simply says, you know, thank you so much for taking the time with it. And you can even see research. Thank you for uh, helping with research. I'm so grateful. And, you know, um, I'm a note writer. I've been a note writer all my life. My mother was. I taught, she learned. I. I learned from her. She taught me. I write many, many times uh, as many as 50 notes a week um, because, you know, the minute that we're in such a, a crazy world now that the minute the, an email goes off, you're like, done, done. That's done. Great. Now yeah. next. And I want to have those brain cells be uh, stolen and taken. And so two days later, they're going to get a, a note and it's going to make them smile. And I want them to associate happiness with me. Right. happiness with me right that's what it is and that's going to make them smile and they're now going to think about me again and guess what hmm the reticular activator goes off and another connection referral right. is coming my way yep absolutely and i always tell folks it's like when we're thinking about generating referrals like it's really important that you do what your mama taught you right mm -hmm. which yeah write those handwritten thank you notes because we were on some level taught by somebody, right? Maybe in that first boss, but somebody taught us that we should be sending handwritten thank you notes um, because that's the impact. But I always tell folks, why would you expect more referrals from someone when you can't take a minute or two to truly thank them in the po polite and proper way for the referral they just sent you? 
Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I've heard lots of people say that I never I, I stopped giving them referrals because I never heard back from them. Not I mean, just not even a replied email like thanks for the referral, not a note, not, hey, I wanted to let you know I called them and I talked to them and we're moving forward. Thank you again. Right. Keep them apprised of what's happening in the process. Yep, and, absolutely. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so what questions should we be asking our referral partners? I'm going to use that word now for now. What questions should we be asking our referral partners when we receive a any one of the four categories, a word of mouth, um, I'm trying to memorize them, a word of mouth, um, <laughs> mouth introduction, introduction, yeah. warm lead, or referral? What are some of the questions that we should be asking our referral partners if we're not clear? about it. I mean, you know, it might be that they just typed the email and didn't put the need in. Right. Yeah. So right. when you, when you get an email where the need hasn't been identified, it's really easy to kind of go back and be like, Hey, I just want to make sure I'm clear here. Were you connecting us? Right. Were you connecting us so that because you had a conversation with them and they need what I do, like they need me, or were you connecting us just because you think that we should know each other, right? So it's, it's, it's whatever questions you need to ask, it's for the clarification you're ultimately looking for that yeah. you may need. Um, I think that's an important um, part of it. So I always tell folks, most of the time when I'm working with someone, it is their opportunity to go analysis paralysis. Mm -hmm. And they overthink their reaction and what they should say back to death. <laughs> And like, it's not, you don't need to be that worried so much about it. If you are unclear, hey, this is an introduction, I think not a referral and you want clarification, just ask for it, right? Like, hey, I just want to kind of ask you offline before I respond back. Like, do you connecting us because they, they needed to work with me. One of my favorites says is I got a referral, but it wasn't a referral when it first came over um, from a client. And he was referring somebody else to me and the email was very nonchalant like hey you guys should know each other it was your classic introduction you guys should know each other right um you know stacy i've mentioned you and i've mentioned him to you like it's just kind of like this nonchalant there's nothing there and so i reached out to the client and i said hey i'm just trying to get the backstory here why were you connecting us? Is it because you just want us to grow our networks? Does he need to grow his network? Does he should be hiring me? And he goes, mm -hmm. oh, he should totally be hiring you. He's just not 100% ready to have someone tell him that. I was like, oh. So right there, I know exactly how to, car how to craft my response, right? Because just by asking, hey, you didn't really say you should be hiring. The perfect referral for me is, hey, Jen, right? Meet Stacy. She's awesome at telling you how to get referrals and teaching you how to get referrals without asking. You should talk to her about working with her. Like that's the, right. That's the right. perfect girl for me. Like, Hey, you yeah. need to hire Stacy, right? Um, yeah. but when they come in and they're more like cryptic and you're like, Oh, I'm not really quite sure what this is. I just ask for the Intel. I just ask for the information. Yeah. What am I missing? Right. Same thing that so, you asked. Right. right. So yeah. And, and I wasn't doing it for clarification of referral connection or whatever. I was just doing it for clarification of my ability to convert. Right. right. So, so not unbeknownst to me, I was doing that. So let me ask you in that quit in, in that um, particular situation that you had there, did you ask that, that person who did the referring to um, amplify their, their response and say, Oh, Hey, you know, one thing I just, an additional thing I wanted to add here real quick was this, you know, did you ask them to do that? Or did you take it, uh, it on as a professional and say, okay, now I know how to handle it from here. I'm just curious about that. Yeah. There may be people that um, really feel like they need to have, if that truly is a referral, then I really need to have this person um, share the fact that they trust me a little more because maybe my skill set isn't so good in sales. Yeah, so I think it depends on kind of where you are in the situation that you're in from that perspective. You could do either. In that situation, I didn't. When my client had told me the conversation that he had had with the prospect and why he had connected us, right, from that perspective, I knew exactly how I wanted to address the prospect to get them on a phone call to even see if this is in the, the potential of going anywhere. And I was prepared for it not, and I was prepared for it too, right? But I okay. think from that perspective, if you really need your referral source to make that connection as that they need to hire you, then yes, you can ask your referral source to send a follow-up email if you feel like your relationship is strong enough with a referral source to do that and they're in the habit of referring you if it's the very first referral they've ever sent to you i usually don't tell people to kind of tell the referral source to change how they're doing things because we haven't yet built a habit in them and i'm just pleased that they're close to sending a yeah. referral 
And that conversation yeah, so I can have with them. don't want to make it difficult and come. Right. I, I don't want to make it difficult. And if, you know, if I know what my conversation is at that point following up, then I know exactly how to spin this or swing it or modify my language so that I am put into myself in the driver's seat. Like I actually just got one recently where a financial advisor referred me to a business coach. So I have lots of different types of people who go through my growth by referrals program. Um, business coaches, consultants are one subset of them. And he referred me, but he said nothing about my program. He said nothing about really anything other than, hey, she started her practice and I, we were talking and your name came up and she's awesome and you should get to know her. And I was like, what am I going to do with this? So <laughs> because of where I am and I'm so many years into this and I kind of know how I get these referrals from this one particular financial advisor, right? I had a different response than I would necessarily teach other people to have. And my response was, was to take the bull by the horns and be like, I'm so glad that ex financial advisor connected us and had talked about me. And I don't know what you've learned about how I work with people and what my, like I went right into the, I don't know where you are in your journey, but I'm glad we were connected and that you're interested in learning more about working with me. Now the case is if she hadn't have been, that's okay. But I'm at a stage in my business where it's okay for me to lose out on that. I'm not chasing, right? Like I'm not going to start the chase. If she wasn't a truly someone who was referred to me and she was just referred to me for someone to go have coffee with, I don't do that that much anymore. And I don't do it as, as often as I used to. So that would have been a harder yes for me anyway. So I just went right into the, yeah. I'm so glad that you were connected and that you uh, had a conversation and my name came up. I would love to hop on a call and have a conversation with you about how I work with people and how I help people get referrals without asking and what my program looks like. So I went straight for it. Turns out I was right. And usually my gut is now, cause I've been doing this long enough. My gut was right. She was like, I actually, I've ordered your book and I've taken your referral ninja quiz. And like, it was just kind of random that you also came up in conversation with this other person, right? That I know. Um, and so now we're getting on a call, right? Yeah. So it was, it's your ability to navigate and to use your best judgment in those situations. If you need more backstory, I say, ask for it, but don't ask your referral source necessarily to do an extra step for you unless you really trust them. And you know, asking them won't be off putting to them. Right. Right. I get it. Yeah. Cause we don't want to make it complicated because otherwise it's like, geez, every time I send a referral, I got to do more homework and, and you know, so, um, <laughs> yeah, no, we definitely don't want, we don't want that. Okay. So let's, let's switch gears and talk about, um, in the time that we have, um, available, we only have a few minutes left is, um, the five steps to generating referrals without asking. So can you share with us what those five steps might be? Sure. So I'm going to give you kind of like that high level overview. There are definitely additional resources where you can go find out this information. Each of these five steps actually has its own chapter in my book, Generating Business Referrals Without Asking. So you can grab the book. There's also resources on podcast episodes I've done on it and articles that I've written on, on my website. So if someone feels like when I do my high level, you left me hanging, it's a time yes. constraint. Right? I need more. Right. And there are places you can go get it. And most of them are free. And the book's only like $17, $16.95. So nothing's going to cost you that much to get what you're missing. But the high level um, explanation of the five steps is number one is, okay, let me tell you, I'm making an assumption. And the assumption I'm making is that you actually already do great work. You have a sticky client experience, you have processes and procedures in place, and you've probably received some referrals in the past. Maybe it was just one or two a year, but you've actually been referred before. If you don't have a sticky client experience or you've never received a referral in the past, I have other parts I would tell you to start. Like, we're not going to start with step one. We're going to start somewhere else. And there's other resources I would direct you to. So with these five steps, I'm making the assumption you do great work, you've got a great client experience, and that you've received referrals in the past, which tells me you are actually referable. So step number one is to identify who has actually referred you in the past. It's identifying our referral sources. The easiest way to do that is to pull out a list of your clients and figure out how they came to know you. Maybe you have this in a database, right? Some kind of CRM, client relationship management tool. Awesome. If yeah. not, maybe you have to reconstruct the data, but it's who, which all of your clients, where'd they come from? Oh, this came from a podcast. This one came through, uh, you know, I spoke on stage. This one came through a Google ad. This one came through referral. This one came through, you know, you look at where they came from and you're just paying attention to the clients who refer to you along with the names of those referral sources. A referral source is always a first and last name unless Madonna is referring you. <laughs> a first and last name. I always get people like, yeah, it's this person. And like, they have a half name. I'm like, in five months, will you know who that person is? Right? Like, right. I just need to know you know who they are. Yeah. You've identified your list of goals. You've got your referral sources. Step two, people say, oh, it feels out of place. It's not. It is your ability to write a handwritten thank you note when you receive a referral, only because I need you to be able to set the gratitude and the thankfulness in place. And when we come to step three, step two is really important. 
And so step two is that handwritten thank you note. So you've identified your referral sources and you are committed to every time you receive a referral, you will send a handwritten thank you note. Okay, step three is, okay, well, what are you gonna do in between receiving those thank you notes, right? We're sending thank you notes for referrals received because we are earning, right, that right to have that ref more referrals sent to us. I always tell right. folks, you deserve referrals. You do. You're just not owed them. So you have to be willing to do some work. And so you're gonna write a handwritten thank you note, but step three is, is well, what do we do to maintain, cultivate, deepen, strengthen, and that relationship with our referral source in between actually just writing handwritten thank you notes because you may right. only get one referral a year. So step three is we build this plan and our plan is just, it's our outreach to our referral sources and our plan is it's keeping us top of mind and being memorable and meaningful, which means it's not your newsletter. It's not you sending them a text message because some auto responded reminded you every 45 days to send a text message. Hey, how are you? We are doing things that are memorable and meaningful that are going to grab their attention and are going to continue for you to like pour into them as you're thankful and grateful for the fact that they support your business and send you referrals. Yeah, I love that. And I, I want to inject here too, because for those that have been listening to the podcast for a while, for a while, this is the nurturing versus neglecting. <laughs> I talk about all the time, right? Are you yeah. nurturing or neglecting your database? And sending a thank you note and letting it dangle out there. It's a dot, dot, dot for me. Yes. It's just there. It's there. And they have to expect, and, or not expect, but um, try to decipher what your expectations are as a result of that. You got the note. That's great. But now what? Right? right? right. So nurturing. I love that. So keep going. Great. Yeah. So I always tell folks, you know, the reason why I write the thank you note is because I always want to know that I want my referral source to know that I'm worthy of the next one. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that in my note, but I'm building. Right. That, right? And then yeah. we have this plan of how we're going to continue to maintain that top of mind, memorable and meaningful connection with our referral sources. And we do it in some very specific uh, unique ways. And I always tell folks like there's so many things you can do. I don't need you doing so many things. I need you doing a few of the right things that you're going to do throughout a year. But this plan you build is going to be wash, rinse, repeat. So I have people who've been in my program now for five years exceeding their referral goals they want to receive every year because they do the work and they follow the plan. Um, but what makes step three so great is actually combining it with step four. And step four is the language that we use specifically planting referral seeds that impacts, right, that plan, those outreach, those touch points that we're doing with our referral sources. So it's, yes, we're doing some touch points. We're not just doing them for the sake of doing them. We're actually going to use some language that's going to allow us to plant referral seeds, but we're never asking and we're never being promotional or gimmicky, but it is allowing them to think about us on a different level in a subconscious way about referrals without us ever saying, and I want you to dream about me in referrals, right? Like, you know, we're not saying that to anybody, but subconsciously, right. When people right. take care of us, we look for ways to take care of them. So we're just going to be planting some seeds so they kind of know what would be awesome without telling them and without asking them. And then step five is kind of what wraps it all up with that perfect Tiffany blue box with a nice little bow on top, right? And that's the idea of we know who our referral sources are. We are a grown up and we can send a thank you note when we receive a referral. So we're worthy of more. We have a plan to nurture those relationships and we have the right language to use while we're nurturing those relationships with our outreach. Step five is, yeah, but you're busy, just like me. So we need to make sure that this is a process. This is a plan. This is something that we've um, systematized within our business so that it happens. Right. Because... If you, if you don't follow the plan, right, the way we built it, then you go exactly what you said. You go right into neglect mode and all of a sudden you haven't talked to that referral source in nine months. And that is not going to generate you more referrals if you're not taking care of them. So it's this idea of we build this process and system that's five is the thing that helps make it happen. So yeah. when I talk about people who've been in my program for five years or four years or three years and they're hitting their goals and they're exceeding them, right? Like the uh, attorney who was bringing in one, two, three referrals a year, started on the program then got to like 20 and then the second year she got to 40 referrals in a year and like that's more work than she can manage right it's different for every industry but for right. her it's because year two she was still following the plan yeah and that is the point because we make it into a process and a system with the step five yeah, and, and you can't scale your business unless it is a process. You can't have one person have one experience and another person not have one, especially in referrals, because you know, if someone had a great experience and feels wonderful about you, and when they think about you, they smile, and they say, oh, you have to talk 
to Stacy and you have to work with her because you mentioned that you need help in this area, right? And it's a true referral. And then they go to Stacy and they don't get the same experience. They're like, I, I know you referred to me, but you told me all these wonderful things that, that she did. And mm, I didn't see any of that. Right. And so right. that consistency and I, it's consistency, but it's also the discipline of doing it. And, and yeah, you're right. We're adults. And I, I was just saying something to someone the other day is like, you know, just stop dreaming and keep your day job. Because if you're going to go into entrepreneurship and in places where you're going to need referrals and you're going to be a salesperson, you might as well just keep your day job. Because you, if you dream about being successful and you're not willing to put the work into it, it's not going to, it's not it going to happen for you. It won't happen at all. Yeah. It and won't. I would say something to you. And a lot of people kind of, um, I don't know, this is exactly what you meant with, with what you said, but I always want to clarify this because a lot of people think when someone's referred to me, I have to do the exact same referral process to them that I did for my referral source. And I always say we are extremely clear in everything we do as to why we're doing it is because they refer you. It's not just because they're a client. So you can have clients who refer you, they get a client experience. And then they get a layered referral experience on top of it. And yeah. then you can have clients that were referred to you, but have never referred you. They still get that same awesome client experience, but That's they are correct. not getting the layered on referral experience because correct. they're not referring you. And we're very clear that this is happening because you're taking care of my business and referring. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Yeah. No, what I was talking about in the day job is if you're not willing to do the work, right? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. To do the work as, a, as an entrepreneur, you might as well just keep your day job because you're going to yep. struggle, right? And this is about discipline of putting systems together, right? multiple systems, right? Not just this one or two, but several right. systems together. Um, okay. So as we finish up today, um, I know that you have, you have a Facebook, uh, Facebook group that any, anyone could join and we'll put a link in that um, for there, but it's called um, referrals without asking, right? And so you can get on there and start getting your questions answered. And um, I believe that you have a seven day challenge as well. So tell us about that. Yes. So there's a seven day challenge. It's the seven day referral growth challenge. And it's just a video drops into your inbox every day for seven days from once you sign up that just helps you start setting a foundation of what it looks like to be able to start generating referrals. And part of that challenge, um, you can take it separate, but also part of that challenge is actually a referral ninja quiz. And it is a great opportunity for you to figure out where you stand in your ability, your skills to actually generate referrals without asking for them. So it's a nine question quiz. You can take that quiz. It's actually part of day one of the challenge, or you can take it separately if you don't want to do a challenge. Um, but it goes through and it asks you specific questions that help you understand where you are in your stage of being able to generate referrals. So you're going to land with one or one different type of referral ninja level. So I always tell folks, um, the top level is the master level. You want to be a referral ninja master. You want your red belt. But of the thousands of people who've taken the quiz, only 2% typically land at the master level. Over 80% land at the beginner level, and then the rest kind of land in the middle. And so I always tell folks, when you take the quiz and you figure out what referral ninja level you are, there's lots of free resources that'll come behind that to kind of help move you towards that master level in your journey. But it starts to be taking that nine question quiz. Awesome. I love that. And we'll have that link down here as well. Okay. So you've already shared. Um, so, you know, again, it's all about action guys, you know, think today about writing a thank you note. Let's just start with, Hey, write a thank you note when you get a referral today. <laughs> um, but also just an assessment of maybe the last refer the uh, referrals that you, you know, had in the last month or so going back into that, into that. I um, mean, I'm using the term very loosely, but everybody that you've been connected with and reassessing and saying, you know, was that a referral or connection? And maybe that's why it didn't convert is because I didn't have clarity of what type it was. It's always good to go back and, and analyze where things were so that you have more clarity moving forward, right? In, in all the referrals and hopefully your reticular activator will be going now um, to do that, to uh, assess that and really recognize um, and change the way that you're doing things. Um, consider taking the seven day challenge and definitely take the ninja test. I think that's probably the most important thing is, you know, do you, you may think you're really good with referrals, but maybe not. And I'm going to throw out something else too. If you belong to an organization, you belong to a BNI or to a chamber, what a great activity for your group to be able to do, because if they're not getting the results that they want, it's a great way for, um, 
everyone to see where everyone's category is in there. And it's a fun game, gamification of referrals, you know, in the educational moment that you have in each one of those. So I'm going to encourage you to do that with your groups as well. What a great way to do it in your offices too, you know, your sales staff or your team and, and find out where everybody stands with that. And, and then the last thing, Stacy, is just that um, if someone wants to reach out to you directly, what is the best way for them to reach out with you directly because they want more information than just going to the resources you have available? online. Yep, absolutely. So um, if you go to stacybrownrandall.com, that's of course my home base, my website. Um, down at the bottom, you can find my email address, so you can certainly send me an email. Um, but if you're on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or LinkedIn, you can connect with me. Just look for Stacy Brown Randall and send me a uh, private message or a LinkedIn message, direct message. Um, that's another way to reach me as well if you're really well versed in social media. But if you like the good old fashioned email like I do, you can find that on my website. Awesome. All right. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for uh, gracing us with your presence again today. I think this is really good to hear, um, particularly when we're, uh, you know, recording this as we get towards the end of 2019, but obviously something that we want to hear all the time. But in thinking about the new year and re-strategizing and putting your business plan and your marketing plan together, this is the time to start making those little tweaks to uh, get the results that you want. So again, it's don't talk about doing this. Let's put this into play. Let's implement this, take the action so you can get the results next year and amplify your business. So Stacy, thank you again for joining us today. It was great seeing you and I look forward to us continuing to grow our relationship as well. Same here. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to Mortgage Lending Mastery. Looking to streamline and launch your practice by accessing Jen's tools, courses, classes, presentations, and resources? Visit jenduplessis.com to learn about the features and benefits thousands of other professionals have experienced by enrolling in Jen's lifetime membership program. Isn't it about time you consider a coach to take your business to new heights? Contact Jen to start your application process today. Thanks again, and be sure to tune in next week.